Hello, everyone, and welcome back to For the Minions, the weekly show where we talk about some of the, hopefully, what will be the spiritual successors to our favorite game, Paragon. And uh, I am your host, the one and only Mangoose. Joining me, as always, is Mandy Mal. How you doing, Mandy? I'm doing well. We have another fabulous guest host for you guys. Uh, we have a prototype 1020, but his friends call him Doug, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Most of them, at right. least. <laughs> well, it's so good to have you with us. Why don't you tell us how you got started with Paragon, favorite hero, all the all the good stuff. Well, uh, Paragon's not actually my first entry into MOBAs. Um, I picked it up because I saw it at E3, I believe it was 2015, and uh, I was super excited to have a PlayStation MOBA because most of my friends were on PlayStation. Uh, I played League of Legends before that, huge Heimerdinger main, uh, a lot of Smite, but nothing quite sunk in like Paragon did. Um, favorite hero, Countess. Uh, I mastered four of them. I mastered uh, Murdoch and Grux both in Legacy and Countess and Aurora in Monolith. All fantastic. I loved them all. Right um, very nice. Very cool. Well, thank you again so much for joining us. We really hey, appreciate it. It's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> so, okay. So thank your you. favorite hero w was Countess. Is there a reason for that? I mean, what, what, why count us? Why count us out of all of them? I personally felt like I just synergized really well with her, especially with my team. Um, she was a very high skilled capped character that yes. could have huge impact if you played her right. Her early game was very weak. Um, you really had to rely on being able to pick off the ranged minion, but to do that, you had to put yourself out of position. And um, my buddy who played in the jungle, he did a Sarath jungle. And um, the synergy between the two of us diving the back line was just fantastic for our carry and our mages and everything just to blow them all up. Yeah, that's a that's a very good strategy. Yeah, you're right. Countess was very high risk, high reward character. I hope uh, I hope they, they, they keep that going. Um, when they dropped the new card system, it seemed like it seemed like Kalari and Countess, it seemed like everybody started playing her, though. Like, that high risk went away. It was only mm -hmm. the high reward. So always, I've always felt bad for the people that had that had mastered Kalari and Countess and were like Kalari and Countess mains when version 42 dropped, because then everybody was playing them, and it wasn't, it wasn't so much of an accomplishment. I felt that before that, like, Legacy Countess and, um, you know, early Monolith Countess, playing her well was an accomplishment by the player, you know what I mean? Yeah. It, I fully agree. Absolutely. I think 42 took a lot of the skill out of a lot of characters because they just handed you these gems you can buy in lane to give you safety under towers and stuff. And it was just like, yeah, but there's no challenge here. It was very for newcomers into MOBAs. Very watered down. Yeah. Anyway, let's move on to news and updates. Starting off, of, as always, in alphabetical order, we're going to go with meta buff and core. So uh, I kind of touched on this briefly in a video. They gave me this uh, this update for the last for the minions, but they gave it to me a little late. So I'm going to give it to you now. Um, they're, they're working hard on optimizing the programming. And uh, they say we have compiled and have our first build out. That's the uh, the first game build. And uh, the, they have the, their new foundational coding and will continue to test and expand prepping for the alpha so that they they are uh, doing some internal testing there of the game. Hopefully it's I'm not sure if it's server based testing or if it's just in inside the Unreal Engine testing. But um, any, any way you slice it, that's good news. And any news from from Meta Buff at this point is good news. What do you guys think? Uh, let's go Mandy. Mandy, what do you think? Um, I think it's really, really good to finally hear something from them um i know we kind of would hear a little bit more than maybe the the general public so it's really good that we have something like this that we can tell everybody because i know they've been a little concerned but i think you know like you said that's a good that's a good step that's a that's a big step um so i'm happy to hear it and just just looking forward to to more prototype any thoughts i fully agree um me personally i watch e3 every year I'm always hyped up for the news, but I'm I'm used to not getting it so often. Right. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Their silence really doesn't bug me. I'd rather them buckle down like a higher end AAA studio to produce a game that we're all going to love and enjoy, rather than here's constant news and feedback, rather than 
us constantly putting input in, them changing stuff, and us never getting an actual game. Right. That's a really excellent point. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you said that because I know I had kind of said in a previous episode when we talked about it um, that this is an unusual situation for us to even be getting the amount of information we've already gotten. Um, so it's just important for people to keep that in mind that, that a lot of games you don't get the information as readily as we have so just just keep that in mind and have a have a little bit of patience um with them while they're while they're like you said buckling down working hard so i'm glad you said that i've been talking about this with a lot of people lately um here's my thing with it here's my thing with how silent they've been after the announcement of the delayed alpha see we are in in no way are we entitled to any of these updates did they haven't had they didn't have to be as transparent as they have been however they were very transparent while things were going good and completely shut down and went opaque when things went bad. And you can't really do that and expect the fan base to be okay with it. You can't, it's it's easier to say no and then say yes and then say yes and say no. And that's kind of what they did. They were like, here's full transparency. We're going to be full transparent. Good, good, good. Here's all this info. Here's all this info. And then like alpha delayed, everybody kind of like, hey, what the hell? And then they just... Boom, nothing for, for a long. good long time. So I think that's the main reason people are kind of losing a little bit of faith in Core. Um, as you saw with the last hype poll, it's not as bad as you may think. It's, um, you know, they're still, Meta Buff is still the front runner out of all these games. I, I, um, I'm, I'm pretty, uh, pretty confident saying that. So that's just, yeah, that's that my two cents on, on, on the, uh, the transparency and opaqueness of Meta Buff and Core. Yeah, yeah, that is another another good point there. Opacity, opaqueness. I don't know how to say that. <laughs> Not an English major. Let's move <laughs> on to Omega Studios. <laughs> um, Smokey, he just squeaked in under the, under the, under the uh, finish line um, just as I was coming home today. He let me know that they're going to have all the heroes ready next week. Um, they haven't been able to stream much. Smokey's been hard at work, at actual work, and then... Um, you know, he's got a lot of personal stuff going on in his life right now that's been taking up a lot of his time. So not a lot of streaming, but there is work still being done on Predecessor. And uh, with all the heroes being ready, hopefully pretty soon we'll uh, they'll, they'll open that alpha back up. And we'll be able to get in there and duke it out. Um, did you get a chance to take a look at, um, at any of the alpha footage or anything, Prototype? I did. I absolutely did. I watched a ton of streams when people were streaming it. Um, I watched... Uh, I I couldn't help it. I was so enveloped in it. I wanted to be a part of it so bad. I never, I didn't get one, sadly. Um, but yeah, I was watching streams. I'm always watching Smokey stream. Whenever he streams, I'll pull it up at work or something. Just just to be there to help show I'm supporting. Yeah. And there's still time for those uh, alpha keys. So hang in there. <laughs> Maybe I just realized there's a cat behind you. There is a kitty cat behind me. <laughs> it moved. I was like, is that her hair? <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, there's always a cat somewhere. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> we all need a little pussy. Um, <laughs> moving on to Ethereal. Uh, <laughs> I just wanted to touch on their, their lore. Um, as you guys may or may not know, I, I um, after their lore contest, they kind of picked me up as a as um, a consultant for their lore, I edit their lore, and so I've been seeing all the stories, and they're pretty much done. They've got story, they've got backstories done for almost all of their heroes, or or myths, as I should say. And uh, hopefully, hopefully that'll be coming out soon. Whenever they redo their website, and I just wanted to reiterate, a lot of people too have been thinking that the lore contest was a hoax because you know Undying really didn't do an official announcement of who the winners were. Um, and I, I kind of looked back through it this week to see if they did, and they they never really did. They kind of did like a little, like a small little announcement on their on their Discord. But uh, just so you guys know, it wasn't a hoax. It was a uh, UG Mystique. I say UG because they now work for Undying and UG Ace. So those were the two winners of uh, of Ethereal's lore contest. So that's uh that's all I got to say about that. And then as far as lore goes, I know a lot of people don't give a shit about lore, but I think people give more of a shit than you actually think. Um. Because would you really play a game if all the if all the heroes looked exactly the alike, just did different things, or 
Would you like Sparrow as much if she was named DPS number three and Murdoch was DPS number two? You know what I mean? You got to have some character and some lore to the game in order for it to be interesting, I personally think. But, you know, whatever. Mandy often disagrees with me on the lore because she doesn't uh, she doesn't give a crap about lore. And um, she's always like, you and your nerd friends need to shut up about lore. That's what she tells me all the time. He's so full of crap. All I say is that it's not for me. I'm not going to sit and read it, but I'm happy for those that do. <laughs> Such a liar. <laughs> what do you think about lore prototype? Uh, I personally enjoy lore as long as it's not generic lore. Yeah. It's, as long as it's not like she was in the wilderness and had a bow and went hunting. Like... <laughs> As long as it's intriguing. Um, mm -hmm. One itch I did have about Paragon, I did like the bullets. I just kind of wish there was more to them. But I understand why they kind of left those open ends there for more characters and stuff like that. So the mystery was really nice. I just wish there was a little more meat. Yeah, I always thought that they were going to follow up on those bullets. And maybe they were. Like a, mm -hmm. like there's, like a bullet about Morgesh was that Narbash once gave her a frog. And it's like... Who needs don't, to know that? Don't just say that. Like, let us know what the frog was about. <laughs> yeah. I, know the story I do have me. to say, that was a good, the the mystery, because I assume the same thing, that there was eventually going to be all this lore. And the little bullet points did intrigue me and make me want to know more. Um, and then there at the end, they did start releasing some of those stories. Like, they did one for, what, Countess, Countess and Tara, Faze, yeah. Tara, yeah. yeah. Um, and those were cool. Uh, I, I liked them in in small, consumable portions. Um, but if it's like a big, drawn out novel of a story, I can't. I can't. Even if it was like Sparrow, I just was not gonna sit there and read it. Also, it's, maybe that would be a good idea for them to just release it in little tidbits. I fully agree. Um, I've played Dark Souls. I don't know a spot of the lore of it though. <laughs> it's like you gotta you gotta go and find it all and everything. I'm like. I like the game, but not that much. <laughs> right. I think good character backstory, if you could like, it's like the little pamphlet, the little books you used to get in your games. Like, <laughs> yes. like that yes. needs to fit on like one page of that. You know, if you get one page Absolutely. of that, that's perfect for your lore. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I bet I probably have a game in that closet that has one of those pamphlets in it. <laughs> <laughs> I used to hate when I would rent a game and it was like the photocopied one. I was like, oh, this is bullshit. Uh... There's no color. <laughs> <laughs> I remember going into Blockbusters when I was little oh. and just, uh, I remember hooking up the, uh, I think it was the game cartridge for Pokemon Snap and printing out your own photos of for the game. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Rest in peace, Blockbuster. <laughs> yeah. You will be missed. There's still one open. <laughs> Only one. So uh, move on to Phoenix Rising and then move away from Phoenix Rising because they didn't have anything this week as usual. I just want to remind you guys, um, all these uh, all these games, if you want to look into them yourself, I have all their social medias or as many social medias as I can linked in the video description below. So you can go check them out on your own. And also, I just want to remind you guys too, um, if you guys want to be on the show, if you want to host like Prototype, all you got to do is shoot, you know, be, you know, be enthusiastic about Paragon and be enthusiastic about these games and shoot me a DM in the uh, in Discord and I'll throw you on the schedule. I don't care. So <laughs> let's uh, go on to the poll results for this week. So the poll results, what I'm doing, I'm going to do it like a tournament bracket. And I'm doing five heroes at a time. And I did them alphabetically, which a lot of people didn't seem to understand how I picked those five heroes. Um, it, it was just completely alphabetical. And I'm just going to keep doing that. So it, And it kind of did result in a pretty mismatched poll for this week but the poll is for most impactful ultimate and uh the winner was aurora out of aurora countess crunch decker and drongo and i think this one really kind of came down to aurora and decker like that was the real competition here and it kind of sucks that those two had to square off because i think that that could have been that could have been the final the final bracket is aurora against decker as far as impactful team fight ultimates go but um yeah, like Drongo, like, I don't know who voted for Drongo, but like 2% voted for Drongo. I like Drongo, he was a cool character, but his his ultimate was not very impactful on a team fight. Um, but yeah, uh, Prototype, uh, what, what, what do you got to say about the poll? Um, 
I personally agree that Aurora was impactful. I don't think she was as impactful as Decker, though. Mm. Aurora's ult was um, meta-defining at a time because at, once she came out, everybody had to start running purity sensors. If you didn't and there was an Aurora on the team, you lost. I remember when they had to nerf her into oblivion because when she ulted, she would shatter whoever. And then if some if uh, a sparrow and a phase were next to each other, they would shatter off each other again. Yeah. And it, it was outrageous. Um, but I think just Decker had more synergy with more characters. You could cage with Gideon, mm -hmm. Steel. You could, uh, we used to, me and my team would cage. And then we'd have our Sparrow on the outside just blasting in with her ult. There was just more characters to combo well with Decker than Aurora. But, I mean, Aurora's did define a meta. So and I think that's interesting that you mentioned FaZe and Sparrow because th like FaZe was so powerful on release, but then once people figured out that Purity Sensor was the counter to Aurora, people stopped playing FaZe because she didn't have access to Purity Sensor. So it, like Aurora's ultimate directed, you know, your picks of other heroes, your picks for supports, you had to have somebody that had that order affinity or else you were going to get super fucked by Aurora. Yep. What do you got to say, Mandy? You got anything? Um, I actually agree with what Prototype was saying. I, I voted for Decker. I don't know if we're supposed to get political here. <laughs> uh, I voted for Decker because um, I thought that, you know, out of the out of the choices here, I'm very interested to see the the final um, the final poll. That's going to be really interesting. Um, but yeah, I felt like she hers was just so. If you're talking about a team fight, I mean, what's better than that cage? Drop in the cage, and that's that was my opinion. Um, I thought she had an awesome ultimate when it came to you know those kind of uh, big team fights and maybe even game changing turning you know can turn around a, a game let me pull up my comments for this thing somebody okay somebody named that guy did this entire like analysis of each of the ultimates and it is absolutely amazing if you want to go to the poll and read through his his comments it's it's very well written um, wow really enjoyed it but uh yeah one of the things one of the things a few people mentioned too was um Decker's cage was far more impactful on Legacy than it was on Monolith because it dealt damage in Legacy. And also, you know, Monolith, people could just jump out of it in certain places. Like, Legacy, you had to have some kind of movement ability like uh, like Gideon's um, teleport or whatever to get out of a, a containment fence. But mm -hmm. in Monolith, if, she, if, if you caught it at the right spot, anybody could simply just step over the lip <laughs> and be out of it, so... Uh, Monolith really killed Decker. It killed her stun bombs. For some reason, it just didn't work. They never fixed it. They never fixed it. it you had a 50-50 chance on whether it was going to stun. It was, God. here comes the stun. I got it. We're going to gank. Oof. Uh, no, he's gone. So many times I watched it hit somebody right in the head, bounce off, and then, then just <laughs> keep going. I'm like, well, God damn it. <laughs> we got that minion real good. Like, Decker, why don't you stun him? I'm like, I tried. It hit him. <laughs> <laughs> all right that's why a lot more people went towards um narbashes and richters mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i have so much respect for richters hitting those chains <laughs> it is ridiculous now it's... you're talking mongoose's language oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> richter was my man he was the best <laughs> so uh that's gonna that's gonna be it for the uh, poll results let's move well we would usually move into tech time but as you probably know, Ruba is working hard on Predecessor, and I kind of did not want to pull him away from working on the game just to do a little segment for my little show, so I'm going to leave Ruba alone. I'll probably uh, find out how to do some of my own tech times in the future, but for now, we're just going to have another Paragon dance party. Enjoy!
welcome back everybody hope you enjoyed that little paragon dance party um before we get to the topic discussion i wanted to include a new segment on the show uh if you guys have any highlights from old games um i know you can't do the replay system anymore but if you happen to have anything recorded and you want it on the show uh, just send it over to me and uh, i'll see if we can stick it in here somewhere and have a new segment just uh old paragon highlights but uh, let's move on now to the topic for discussion, discussion, which is heroes that will benefit from the slower gameplay of Legacy. Kind of like what heroes might function better if the attacks are a little bit slower and if the gameplay is a little slower. So, uh, Prototype, why don't you kick us off? What do you think, man? I personally think that the long games of Legacy was at one of the pinnacles of Paragon. They were... Phenomenal. I remember my longest match was two hours and 30 minutes. <laughs> and that was back when defensive dunk was the thing for Orb Prime, where you could bring Orb Prime back to your little oh, pit, God, yeah. sink it, and bring your inhibs back. Oh my god. Um, it was it was game changing. You could get your carries fed better. Like if you were behind, the longer games just allowed carries to do more damage, assassins to come out more. Tanks to get, like, everybody benefited from a longer game in the long game. Um, it was just, it was a whole nother level. It was, you had to watch your positioning not only after you got orb, but, like, to get back to your pit. You could get jumped in the jungle by the team that's respawning to come kill you again. It, it, absolutely. Uh, I think I had a, the longest game I think I had was about two hours, but... Yeah, you're right. Uh, supports don't often aren't able often able to max out their builds in long games like legacy style. So I think supports in general would probably benefit from legacy style gameplay because they'll be more often be able to max out their their build or, or whatever and um or get get all the cards they need and that'll be even more impactful with a traditional card system like all of these games are starting to go with. Um, man, did you think any heroes in particular would be? better suited for well, a slower gameplay um i wasn't because i never played legacy i don't think i ever played a two-hour game um probably <laughs> not in monolith i don't know it felt I, real I, good when you won and real bad when you lost yeah yep. i can imagine <laughs> um but so i wasn't a hundred percent sure that i understood the question but my first kind of thought was maybe sparrow or like carries like sparrow that were um slower to, to build up, like, I didn't know if that would be beneficial to them, if I, or if I am understanding the question correctly. But yeah, that was my first thought. So please discuss and tell me if I'm right or wrong. No, <laughs> no, no I think you're absolutely right. I think Sparrow was okay. much more of a uh, a top pick in Long Legacy game. than she was in Monolith. Because Monolith, you know, the games were shorter and Sparrow wasn't able to take off in Too, the late game right. like, she, like she was. Like in Legacy, if the team had Sparrow, you knew that you had to push hard to win quick. Because if Sparrow got her full build, you were kind of fucked. <laughs> she, was, yeah. she was just super stupid strong. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's a good example. Okay, cool. I'm glad. Because I, I wasn't sure if we meant slower or longer, I guess. So, mm. um, I guess so I wasn't... both, really. Yeah, that's that's very true. They kind of go hand in hand. But, um, yeah, that was kind of my first thought is just that giving her that opportunity to max out and then just really whoop ass yeah. you know i feel like that um she was the first one that popped in my mind so my girl sparrow <laughs> i think i think heroes with shielding abilities or like react react abilities like tara's shielding like where she could absorb an attack and then you know have a shield equivalent to that or even um oh. grim being able to absorb an, an ability and then uh, Yin being able to just, you know, knock something back. I think with things flying out a bit slower and a, a bit more planned, then heroes like that will, will benefit greatly. Um, especially Terra, because, you know, when, yeah. when the auto attacks are just flying around, you know, just bam, 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 bam. It's hard to specifically counter a certain ability with her shield when... You're more than likely when you activate it, you're just going to eat an auto attack, which might be, you know, good enough. But if they're going out a little slower, then you can specifically eat a certain attack, get a bigger shield and be more effective as Terra. So I think Terra will definitely be better in legacy style gameplay. And that's the reason we're talking about this, because um, Core and Predecessor both 
want to kind of bring back the legacy era of Paragon. So, and uh, I think Grim, I think Grim, I think Terra, I think Drongo, um, with the way his um, rad rounds work, I think he will be a bit more effective in legacy gameplay than he was on Monolith. But um, no, I just think it's interesting that you bring up uh, characters like Terra and Drongo who were released later in Paragon's life cycle. Think you know that they would have maybe benefited from being released earlier in the life cycle. So. I have successors and remakes and whatever you want to call them um, that are going to be more legacy stylized. Uh, cool to see that some flack, you know, there was definitely, they had their fans. Um, they didn't really get a good opportunity to, to be show, you know, to showcase themselves as, as uh, heroes. So I'm, I'll be interested to see how they do in these remakes. The whole legacy gameplay um i feel really hinged upon travel mode itself uh it was a whole nother like aspect to the game and it gave such an advantage to um like characters with lock-on abilities or characters that could um lump like chimera's jump or countess's teleport it it was it made those characters like need to play in mm -hmm. see if you or jump, you rooted it. it was huge and so i think it would really depend for those types of like characters if they're going to implement that system again mm -hmm. i kind of hope not i loved travel mode and i loved the animations but it i don't think it worked very well if they got rid of the root in the slow for later on i think it would be okay if it was just like a normal MOBA fight, like you just went to your like attacking movement speed from it. Mm -hmm. I think it'd be fine without like any hindrance, but it was really detrimental to get rooted right out of travel mode and there was nothing you could do. You're like, okay, I'm here. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that was probably the biggest problem with Legacy was the travel mode and they didn't, they couldn't figure it out. But uh, like, like I said at the time, they seemed to, they, they fixed the, a small problem with a sledgehammer. Like, they completely Big redid time. the game. Oh, travel mode doesn't work? Let's make a new game. <laughs> yeah. Make it a whole new map and everything. Work. Our card system doesn't work on the new map? Let's make a new card yeah. system. <laughs> kind of crazy. A little crazy. <laughs> but uh, I, think, I think that's about all I have to say on the topic. What do you, you guys got anything else? I'm good. Yeah. I'm all good. All right, right on. Let's move on to plugs. Uh, prototype, you got a Twitch stream or a YouTube channel or anything like that, man? I do. I stream Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Uh, Friday times because I do have an outside life. Um, it's typically 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. Um, YouTube, I typically will just upload the VODs from somebody misses them and wants to see them. Uh, I actually just recently hit 100 followers. Hey, I'm really congratulations. On that affiliate status. Thank you very much. Nice. Congratulations. Very cool. Right on. And I'll have uh, his YouTube and Twitch link down in the video description below. You guys want to go check out Prototype? Yeah. Then we got professional streamer Mandy over here. She's been doing <laughs> it up lately. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm going to set uh probably i'm probably going to get future mandy in trouble but i'm going to set a goal that i will have by the time this is premiering i will have a video out on youtube i'm going to <laughs> i'm probably creating um drama for future mandy but we'll let her deal with it it'll be fine um but yeah i've been sorely neglecting my beautiful beautiful youtube community and um i don't want to do that anymore this premieres, I will have a video out on YouTube. <laughs> okay. We're gonna hold, I don't know what yet, we're gonna but hold it'll to be that. There. We're going to okay. hold you to oh. that. <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing as always. So uh, that is going to wrap up the show for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I enjoyed uh, this. I had a lot of fun with this one. So I uh, hope you guys did too. But uh, that's going to be it. So for the entire For the Minions team, catch you guys later. Bye. Mangoo! Goose!